man, I don't know why I took on a project this big, but I don't know. Let's just jump into this episode. All right, family, welcome back. So as the intro showed, we're gonna be going over the RV today. If you followed the channel and saw the last episode, you know we picked up a Fleetwood Southwind. Uh, it's a 2001 35R. So it's about 36 feet overall. So it's quite a big project. I'm gonna give you guys an update of where we're at now. Um, let's just take a look around real quick. You can see I removed the sofa. Uh, I moved most of the dining uh, and I went ahead and pulled all the upholstery off not only the sofa in the dining set but also the lazy boy that was here they were completely filthy so I went ahead and just took all the fabric off there was thousands and thousands of staples y'all and all this material so I had to literally pull every staple out all except for the soft fabrics uh, and then ran it through the washing machine. I did triple wash on everything uh, and through all kinds of uh, unstoppable scents and uh, shout on the whole thing just to try to get it clean and it came out looking brand new. So I'm happy about that. Um, if you uh, also been following along, you know that we only have three weeks to get this project done and I'm doing the work only on weekends. So it's about six days total I'm gonna be working on this. So. With that being said, I had a lot of things I wanted to do with the RV, but I'm just not going to have time to do it. So I wanted to paint the cabinets and the walls. I think I'll just clean the walls and not paint them at all. The cabinets, I'm still debating on painting. I probably won't uh, simply because that's going to take too much time to prep and paint. There's just a lot of little nooks and crannies. And when it comes to painting cabinets, if you've ever done it, uh, it's really a pain in the ass. So. I uh, just don't have the time to do it in the three weeks I have before we take off on a huge road trip. So I'm going to stick to doing the flooring. Uh, as you can see, I started taking out some of the flooring now. Uh, and then as I just mentioned, I'm going to redo all the upholstery on all of the uh, sofa, dining set, and Lazy Boy. These leather captain chairs uh, on the passenger and driver's side, I won't touch. Uh, the upholstery is really nice and leather is easy to clean in place so I don't need to send them through the wash. Um, I'll give them a good scrubbing and uh, treat them with some uh, protectant. So uh, they don't have a lot of seat time in it. Uh, if you were watching the last episode, again it only has 16,000 miles on this RV. Uh, so there's not a lot of time on these front seats or the um, engine itself and transmission. So that's a good plus with this vehicle although the inside looks like it's been lived in for quite a while because it's filthy and they had dogs in here so um, we're gonna focus on just cleaning up the inside um, not much to do on the engine but I will put a new fuel filter and I have put all new coil packs all new wires um, so it should be good to go for this trip so like I was saying I went ahead and uh, pull all the carpet out in the bedroom. You can see that there and I'm working my way from the back forward So we'll take a look at the bedroom now as you can see here all the flooring has been pulled up um, Keep in mind this is not Water damage or mold or anything like that. That's just the debris from the bottom of the carpet and padding um, That kind of left the powdery residue It's like a sand almost so I need to get that cleaned up all this uh, sandy like material from underneath the carpet pad. Uh, I'm going to get that all vacuumed up. There's going to be tons of staples here to remove as well. This RV is just put together with staples. I think that's how all of them are made to, me, to be honest with you. Um, but lots of staples along this carpet and pad. So I'm going to have to clean this floor and get it nice and level. Ready for the new flooring. So you can see that there we're making some good progress. Um, here in the wardrobe dressing area uh, also got the carpet pulled up I've been testing out some new uh, floors here just to see if I like the color this one is light which will brighten the place up but I don't think it's gonna match anything very well I'm leaning more towards this darker wood pattern here I think it'll go good with the um, 
lighter walls and then when I paint the cabinets white it'll also go good with white cabinets as a contrast uh, and it I mean it doesn't go with the wood grain in here currently but I don't know I think it'll look okay with a darker wood against this lighter wood here um, that's as good as it's gonna get for now because again I'm gonna end up painting all the cabinets white anyways uh, but I certainly think the darker wood is gonna go better than this lighter wood against the light cabinets at least it'll be a contrast um, the dark wood against the light wood versus this light gray against this light brown um, I think they're gonna clash too much but this will be a good contrast against the existing color of the cabinet so I'm gonna go with a dark color I think but that may change by the time I put it down so in future episodes don't hold me to it so that's pretty much the update uh, I do have to pull up this wood floor I tested it here it seems like it's gonna be kind of hard I'm not sure if it's glued down uh, I'm thinking it's glued but um, I'll work my way today through the wood floor here um, and then the carpet on the slide and then this one under the couch doesn't even show like literally the couch covers the whole thing so I may just carpet clean this section here and leave it um, and the reason being is because there's storage underneath the sofa when you lift it and rather than having wood with everything stored underneath sliding around I may just keep it carpet so that way all the stored items underneath will stay in place and won't slide around on the wood so I'll probably keep this carpet here um, and just steam the heck out of it and shampoo it and clean it and shampoo it and clean it like three times but this here certainly under the table shouldn't be carpet so that'll get wood um, because as you're dropping food when you have kids that fall under the table if you know you if you have kids you know that they always drop food when they're eating so it ends up under the table I certainly don't want to have carpet under your kitchen at all so I'm gonna put wood there to match the rest of the RV um, and that way I could just sweep everything out straight out the door um, and then uh, up here I don't think due to the time that I'm going to do wood all the way forward underneath the foot wells of the uh, dash. However, uh, I'll leave the carpet and steam clean these as well. I'll take the seats out probably so I can get in there good and clean this section up really well. Um, really, we're just walking in here with our shoes. We're not like laying down in this area anyways. So I'm okay with the carpet being here as long as I clean it really well. And that'll keep me from having to redo this doghouse too. I'll go ahead and steam clean the carpet on this doghouse um, rather than having to rewrap it with carpet. Um, just don't have the time to do that level of detail right now. So I'll just put a cut line here and put a uh, transition piece here with a little um, threshold from carpet to wood transition. So um, that's what's going to happen here. Uh, and then not to mention also I don't want wood under my feet when I'm stepping through to the driver's seat or uh, driving it down the road it just to me seems like it'll be very slippery um, your feet will slip out from underneath you when you're trying to get in and out of your seat um, and that just doesn't seem comfortable to me I'd rather have carpet in that area uh, just like you would any other vehicle or car uh, same here on this side so Let's see what else I could talk about before I end this video. As you can see, I don't know, the dog, I guess, chewed up this section of wall here. You can see that there. And then this whole piece was missing, so I got to rebuild that. Uh, and then finish out the wiring here. Uh, I'm not sure what these wires are for. If you guys know, comment below. Um, but the ones I can tell you are, there's one for... The living area lighting above and this one's for the porch light outside by the door and that's a stairwell light I got to reinstall but what else would be here on a Fleetwood product uh, 2001 I'm not sure what these wires are for they were just sitting exposed so I'm gonna have to figure that out uh, but if you guys know what else would be here besides patio light um, interior lighting above the kitchen and living area and a stairwell light not sure what that other one uh, is supposed to be connected to 
Uh, so I may have to try to find another Fleetwood and peek inside to see uh, what other switch would be in this area here by the front door. Uh, again, if you know what that might be for, comment below. I know there's some RVR. RVers out there and there's a lot of Fleetwood owners so let me know what's the third switch I'm assuming it's a switch at the front door all right other than that that's pretty much it uh, I had these carpet or these drapes here I went ahead and pulled them all down all the way around and I cleaned those shouted them got all the stains out of them and they look brand new so all of the all of the material that I clean, the fabrics and such that are clean, they're just gonna stay in the laundry room for now because I'm not gonna put any new material in here until after I get the floors down. That's gonna create a lot of dust. Uh, and then I'm gonna wipe all the walls down, wipe the windows down and just give this thing a thorough scrubbing from ceiling all the way down to the floor after I get the floors in. And um, above, I need to mount this TV up here uh not sure if i'm going to use a dc or ac tv i'm still debating that if i want to have a tv that runs off the battery in case i'm not running the generator i may put a dc tv up here like a 12 volt but that's to be debated i want to see if i can get one big enough and still have it be dc and i gotta look at reviews on how well they perform also but that pretty much will complete the front once I get the drapes back up, get the TV hung, steam clean the carpets, wipe down the seats, lay out all this flooring here, uh, and then we'll scrub everything down and put the soft materials back in. Speaking of soft materials, let's go ahead and take a look real quick at what the Lazy Boy looks like in the sofa now that I have it stripped down, just so you can know what I'm talking about here. So we'll step outside and take a quick look here this is the lazy boy here with all the materials stripped off i had to literally take it off in sections so this is the bottom portion here uh the backrest is in the closet inside the rv but you can see i literally had to take everything off uh, down to the springs so i could uh, peel all the fabric off and all the um foam so that way i could put it in the washing machine and this is just a swivel base here this thing is super heavy despite how small it is so that was a pain and uh, let's walk over here into the garage and i'll show you what the backrest and the seat bottom look like on a sofa to kind of show you what i had to do to get the fabric clean so let's take a look at that real quick so this is the backrest here right here you can see it no fabric for the sofa and this is the frame and the seat bottom for the sofa just foam right now i peeled all the fabric off i have to re-pull the fabric and put some haul clips on there to re-secure it once i get uh the flooring done and i start installing so that's pretty much it we'll walk back over here to the rv and just go over some of the things I'm going to be doing to the outside. There's not going to be much there, but I got a couple things I want to repair on the outside. So I'm going to end up putting LED lights up here, uh, high beams and low beams. You can see here I already have one out because it was uh, not working anyways. So I decided to just buy some um, LED lights off of Amazon. Hopefully they work well. Uh, but anything will work better than these lights here because these incandescents, you couldn't see down a highway hardly at all with these they were uh, weak so moving down the RV I got to put a door holder here um, a clip to try to hold the door open so the wind's not blowing it around so I had I ordered that from Amazon so hopefully that fits here uh, I'm gonna get that mounted today just got to go over to Home Depot and get some stainless screws because I don't want it to be rusting and like rust running down the side of my finish here on my paint I got a bunch of marker lights. I'm going to all change them out to LED. This one here, all LED. I'm going to put new LEDs here on the clearance lights. And then this marker light's missing here. So uh, I got to put a marker light there as well. 
and this won't come in for another week so this may not be in the next episode but i did order a handle here for this luggage compartment so i want to go ahead and get that replaced there too that thing was super expensive it was 60 bucks for that little handle it's crazy for one little handle like this 60 bucks not even keyed the same as the ones i have so i have to have a separate key all right so that's going to be it for now i want to thank you guys for watching as always if you like what you saw today, go ahead and smash that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell to be notified of my next episode. And until next time, stay good, family. Peace.